to my channel my name is Ren and I make videos about books and pop culture and today I have a really really exciting video um, I am joined with author LD Lipinski do you want to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about you thank you for coming on my channel as well no it's brilliant it's great to hear yeah so I'm LD uh, I wrote the Strange Worlds travel agency books and my new book Jamie uh is out the end of March. And I was really, really lucky to read an arc of Jamie and it absolutely, it was one of my most anticipated releases of the year anyway. Um, it was on my list and I was just counting down the days until I could read it. Um, and I managed to get an arc of it. And um, I was literally just saying, I finished it with tears in my eyes from all the different emotions, um, just kind of staring into space. And then um, emailed LD like, your book was amazing. I really need to talk with you about it. Um, and uh, you've been so kind as to, as to join me. Um, so yeah, Jamie comes out um, end of March, which is everyone needs needs to go and, and get Jamie. If it's not already on your radar, absolutely like go go and check it out. It's so good and so important and genuinely one of those books where you just sort of want to like throw it at everyone like I do just want to like just like throw it at everyone and be like read this read this read this because as well as the story just being such a good story there's just so much in it which I think people are just going to take away from one of one of the things I want to ask you is is the cover as well like did you get a lot of input in the cover like did you have an idea of what you wanted to be on it because it's Harry Woodgate isn't it who did at Grandad's Camper it is. so um we also don't get a lot of input on our covers generally we um we're generally asked um like is there anything that you don't want and and that's it and, and I always say like I don't want it like a photo that's that's basically where it, where it goes where it lies but uh this time um my publisher's like, well, we obviously really want a non-binary illustrator to, to do it. Do, do you know anybody who's any good? Like, is there anybody who you really admire? And I'm like, yeah, actually. Do you know the amazing Harry Woodgate who did Grandad's Camper? Um, and sent my publisher a load of Harry's work. And the response came back within 15 minutes. They were like, yeah, we're going to approach them. We're going to see if they want to do it. Um, so I was, <laughs> I'm just there, like, fingers, toes, eyes, all crossed. Like, please, please, please do it. Um, and I got a message from Harry um, a couple of days later to say, oh, somebody might be illustrating a book that you've written. <laughs> That's so and, cool. And I, I heard from them before I heard from a publisher, so then I had to act all surprised when uh, I got the email from Hachette to say, oh, Harry's agreed to do it, isn't that wonderful? I'm like, oh, what a surprise. <gasps> but yeah, um, it's very rare for, for you to get your dream illustrator. So this is like, yeah, chef's I care. love I love that you had that input and I also love that like it was a non-binary illustrator as well and like Harry's illustrations are just phenomenal anyway and Grandad's Camper is like one of my favorite like so my niece is she's so she's eight and she her readings like she reads a little bit above her reading level because she, she she's always been into books so I think she's the more she's read she's just gotten a lot sort of like above the level she's at so she, we have like a mini book club um, and she actually found out about Jamie before I could tell her about Jamie um, because she was she loves Grandad's Camper. And even though she's not at picture book age, she had she read Grandad's Camper because I had a copy of it. Um, and she was like, this is a this is beautiful. Can, can you give can you buy me a copy for my birthday? Um, and she reads it like all the time. Like she'll just go back and she'll just so, take comfort in it. And Good she found it for everybody. They are, they absolutely are. And um, so she found out about Jamie because of the cover. Um, and then she was she was telling me about it. Um, but no, speaking of her, so obviously you write a lot of middle grade stuff. Yeah. With, which is also for everyone. Like I am a huge advocate that everyone needs to meet, read middle grade stuff. Like it, it, don't ever stop. Like just don't ever stop okay. reading it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but is it important to you? So obviously we're well, like the topics of, with, with Jamie is it important to you to write at that age because like my niece she is a little sponge so like the stuff that she's reading she takes all of it in and I think that middle grade books are some of the most impactful for shaping how we think about some things because of the age we are when we typically read them I think it's important that it's in like you know that everything's in middle grade books and we're talking about these things from a young age despite what other people try and try and tell us we can't do but um 
yeah how well, how important oh well, yeah I mean I think um you can see from a lot of conservative point of view that they tend to think that queer adults spring into being fully formed popping out yeah the 25 yeah. um which obviously isn't the case you know as a non-binary adult I was a non-binary kid even if I didn't yeah. have terms to describe that and yep. I didn't hear that label until I was in my 30s like I was still that kid yeah and Jamie isn't an autobiography I didn't there wasn't a choice between split schools or anything for me it was it was one secondary school straight through but obviously we still had split PE and things like that and yeah and I think perhaps when you're at that age you kind of because all kids all kids are just kids they're just they're just like little blank molds you know perfect (laughs) little absorbent things ready to go out and become who they are and I think around um, like year six age, you start to, to like really notice the world around you and you don't yeah. just accept things as they are perhaps quite so much because you've been going along just doing as you're told for so long. And all of a sudden you're getting this new freedom. You're going to be going to secondary school, you you know, and it seems to be the age when the kids get their phones, when they start to take themselves yeah. to school. And it's like, this is the big year of change. This is This is when it all sort of happens. And although Jamie being in year six is obviously very plot incidental because they're having to choose between two schools, I don't think it could have perhaps worked as well in any other year group. Yeah. Because if they were slightly okay. older, they would be slightly more world savvy and perhaps a little bit more cynical as well. And if they were younger, I think they would have taken what the adults said lying down a little bit more. So, yeah, I think that them being 11 going on 12 is a really sort of key sort of age of actually, no, this is wrong. I, I completely agree. And um, my niece was saying the same thing because she was talking to me about secondary school. And obviously at the moment she does PE like with everyone because she's yeah. still in primary school. Um, so when we were talking about different secondary schools, she said, oh, do, do, do boys and girls have PE separate? And I said, yeah, I said they did when I was at school. I assume it's the same because she's going to my secondary school uh, when she goes. And um, she, she literally turned to me and she said, but what happens if there was someone that was non-binary? How would they make them feel happy? And I just thought that is why this is important as much as it should be something where, because I always feel like as a queer person, I worry, like not worry, but I don't, I feel like it shouldn't always be our place to like educate people. Like I feel like people should also do their own education, but it can be so important. And the way that Jamie has like the way that you've done that in Jamie I think is so good because obviously there's the little um Jamie's like guide to terminology which is just a really nice I think you did that in such a good way because it was here's some things that not everyone might know but here's a little here's the starting point so you can go research them yourself but and I really liked the way that that was done and the way that you incorporated it as it was something that Jamie was telling us at the same time I that was to be in Jamie's Jamie's voice it's definitely not yeah. me explaining because yeah. I would do, I would do a much more adult job of doing it and yeah and Jamie isn't going to be talking to adults you know the majority of readers I should assume are, are going to be children and young people and they need someone who is a child or a young person mm-hmm. explaining this to them some of the things that Jamie says in it are actually their opinion yeah they're not necessarily facts and I've been quite clear in stating that um but there's a section about labels when Jamie says well I personally Jamie I'm comfortable using this but other yeah. people might not be because there's no right or wrong way to be yeah. non-binary or to be a queer person I didn't want this to be said here is the rule book <laughs> here's the rule book <laughs> to how to do this yeah so it's that no it is it's a multifaceted world and if you realize that you're part of this there shouldn't be a worry that comes along with it that you're not doing it right you could really tell that it was them just kind of saying yeah here's 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 this little here's this little thing and then and then you can go and research them yourself and I think that's what's so good about that especially like you're saying at that age it's when kids do tend to sort of find the internet and get their first phone and it it is at that age where they can research those things and I think that that's really good because it gives them a starting point as, as well as it being kind of in Jamie's voice and it being part of the story just because something's a fictional story doesn't mean that it also can't be educational or, or impactful and I think that that's one of the most important things about this book is that obviously it is you know a story that is a fictional story it's like you said it's not autobiographical but there's so much in it that I think everyone can take away from and and go and do more go and do more research and go and learn from and 
I just think it's yeah I just I just thought it was really important and I loved that part of it I really really loved that part of it it was like Jamie's little diary which I thought which I thought was yeah. really good funny you said that because a lot of the influence from Jamie's voice actually comes from the diary of the wimpy kid books yeah I, I can see that sort of carefree like there is a massive drama going on but actually it's, it's it's just a little drama but when you're 11 it is an enormous drama yeah you can definitely see that um and I I just I just really loved it it was one of my favorite parts I wish Jamie was a book I'd had when I was a lot younger like I think I would have I wish that we'd known about it like I, I wish I'd had a label there I mean, I'm 27 I didn't have a word for it until I was about 25 yeah so I, it I just think it's so important and I I, I can't wait for the gener- like younger generations now to, to have books like this. So standalone books versus a series. How how was that? How did that differ? Because obviously you've been like very much in the strange yeah. worlds like series for so long. How did it how was the difference between jumping into a set? Although this is what I was going to say about Jamie's brother actually if you did want to write a sequel about Jamie's brother and his potential ongoing romance I would not I would not be disappointed um if you're looking for any ideas just well, the best out. thing to come out of people <laughs> reading advanced copies is the fan club that Ollie has come out with yeah <laughs> <laughs> So I have threatened to write um, Ollie, Ollie his own book. Um, Please. But I, I do not have the time. Nobody makes <laughs> Yeah, standalone versus sequels. Um, I knew it was going to be a standalone. Um, like, I didn't want to then turn it into, oh, and then how the he- here's how they got on at school for the next seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever, because that's just school. Uh, and, and some writers can write about school and day-to-day stuff absolutely brilliantly, and I'm not one of them. Um, I wanted the problem to be resolved happily, believably, and yeah. then for Jamie to go off and live their life without my interference, basically. So I was quite happy it being quite compact. Um, I was worried about the length at first because I didn't, I thought it was mm. way too short um, to sell. And it was a lot shorter when I, when it first sold. Um, it has got longer since. But I've never had any complaints, um, publishing wise, about the length. If anything, they seem thrilled that it was going to be shorter and therefore cheaper. I, I thought it yeah. was perfect, but, but yeah, it's it was interesting because you don't have to do any world building in the real world. Everyone knows how the real world. Yeah. You've not got to explain it. So now I look at like Strange Worlds. It's like seventy k, and think perhaps you should be shorter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I I mean, I don't think so. When like reading Strange Worlds, I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. Um. But no, it just it's just an interesting one because obviously that that's how I first like found out about you. I would read those ones. Um and I absolutely love them. They're also brilliant. My friend's a bookseller at Waterstones and for, she just kept like going, read this, read this, read this. And then I caved to peer pressure and I was like, this is really good. Yeah, it's just that it was just interesting to sort of see the difference. But like you said, with like world building and stuff. When it comes to Jamie, so obviously a lot happens with Jamie's character like they realize not not that the world kind of I mean they do realize that aspects of the world kind of suck um but not in like a not like everything is miserable way but like a kind of realizing how the world doesn't always want to accommodate they kind of want to tick a box like the bit the bit that really got me the first time I cried I think was when they go to the like offices and they ask about flying the flag and they say we we already fly the the pride flag once once, once a year and you just think you don't actually care like you're doing that to tick a box to... and I really really that was the first part that made me cry because the council offices in my town do exactly the same thing they'll only fly it in June and then they take it down and then it's not there anymore and you just think, well, <laughs> we haven't disappeared at the end of June. We haven't just vanished. I think that that was such an important turning point in the book, but also for Jamie, like realising kind of how the world is with that. And then obviously that's what kind of kicks up the whole sort of protest and, and everything then on. What was it that kind of, this is such a cliche question, but what was it that kind of inspired inspired Jamie? Because obviously... It is an autobiographical, but from everything around us, we take so much. I know I do that when I write. I'm trying. I'm trying to write my book at the moment. Um, 
and I know that even though it is fictional I take so much from the things around me and stuff that happens I try and put that in there to explain how it how it felt or what's going on and it, you know you do take a lot so what was it that kind of made you jump out of fantasy and be like I, I want to write this book about about Jamie I was really mad um fair yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't supposed to write Jamie at all um my publishers were expecting me to write another another middle grade fantasy and that's what I sat down to write uh but every time I saw something in the news that was transphobic or was a wise fascist I would write a little sort of angry paragraph about it just in my own voice um basically to stop me doing angry tweets <laughs> Um, and these little angry paragraphs became the Jamie's guide to words that yeah. uh, that you find because it was just me talking at the wall, basically. And eventually Jamie's voice sort of crept out and it wasn't me talking at all, it was them. And the story, the sort of the main plot of, you know, I'm torn between two schools, just came uh, because uh, where, where I live, they've recently um, amalgamated a couple of schools because they used to be uh, they used to be split and then they've slowed like like the six forms became mixed and then like it sort of went down and and now the whole the whole schools are which is a lot better be- um on a basic transport level never mind anything else <laughs> yeah yeah and i just remember thinking um because well, there used to be grammar schools as well i just remember thinking that like, imagine spending all your time growing up with your best friends and then just having to abandon them to go to to a different school just just based on what some doctor said when when you were born it seems ridiculous I thought well let's say you know let's let's take it one further you know what if you didn't fit into either of these schools where are you gonna go would any adult have actually sat down and addressed this now I'd like to think they probably would have actually um I'm a school governor and and and, and having seen how schools work I would say that it would be very unlikely that a school hadn't sat down and considered this However, there's probably schools that haven't. And I just thought, well, let's just try picking at this. What would actually happen? Because like we were saying with the pride flag, I think there's a great deal of performative allyship. Oh, 100%. With big organisations in government and things like that. And I think people are quite happy to put up a flag once a month, but are not willing to inconvenience themselves in any way. Yeah. And a non-binary kid who hasn't got an assigned school is a big inconvenience. Yes. And I think they would just want that to go away. And that's where it came from. Just like, okay, so what if this was too inconvenient a problem for the adults to actually have sat and addressed and now it's real. So there is a kid who has this problem. What are you going to do about it? And, you know, full disclaimer, I don't think how it ends is is very realistic, but it's my story and I wanted there to be a happy ending so there I do think it's realistic I will say that I do think it's realistic because I think that you have obviously like like I said I was talking yesterday um to her name's Sarah Coleman um and she is a book illustrator um she il- illustrated the cover of Aristotle and Dante to discover the secret oh wow well, okay yeah um so she um I was talking with her yesterday and um I was telling her about Jamie and was saying about like how um how how much I loved it and uh, she actually said to me she said does it end does it get resolved does it end happily she said I'm going to request an arc of it because I think she does some work with your publishers as well so she she said I'm going to request an arc and she said but does it end happily and I said it ends realistically and I said I think it is realistic and I told her about how they have obviously the um pride event at the school which was just so I just wish I wish my school, like, I wish we'd had stuff like that, you know, the boys from the boys school coming in and and being like, this is the first I've ever seen anything like this. And like, I, I remember being like, I think like 20, I was aware of Ev stuff, but I was trying to figure out my own things and everything made me uncomfortable and labels didn't quite fit. And I remember seeing a badge um, that had like, it was in a shop somewhere and the pride flag went in, it said, sounds gay, I'm in. And I secretly bought this badge. Like at 20, I felt like I had to do this in a secret way. How those boys were when they came onto the field and were thinking, 
I've never seen anything like this. I don't know how to feel, but I know that this is something that I'm a part of was so, so important. And I think that the head teacher seeing that and seeing that that was something that these boys were feeling and that also Jamie was feeling and that there were so many people who needed someone to advocate for them because when they're when you're young like adults don't always want to listen to you as well which sucks and is an extra level and everything and I think that actually sometimes it does take something like that for the adults to think okay so how can I how can I do something and he didn't immediately jump to oh well I'm gonna help you know his initial statement about Jamie was not a was not necessarily a positive one um so I, I think it was realistic I think it was a realistic look at the people around you and how they've been impacted by something that you're not directly contributing to necessarily not to every part of it but that you're not willing to help yeah yeah and that was it, so important yeah. to me I think that you're not making things worse but neither are you helping because why is it is it because you'd have to inconvenience yourself you'd have to say something about yourself or insinuate something about yourself you're perhaps not comfortable with yeah um protest and pride are, are born of of being of born of being discomforted um yeah and it's only through community that we then find that comfort you have to sort of push through the awkwardness yeah a lot, in a lot of cases and you know, I hope at some point in the not too distant future that uh, young people don't have to go through the awkward bit because we will have done that for them. I I think that like genuinely, and I'm I'm not just saying this because of how much I loved it, and I'm not just saying this because of a bias of how much I loved it. Ninety nine point nine percent of books that I read are queer books. Like I I don't really read Same. anything else. <laughs> Jamie is one where I read it and I thought this is really really important for on so many different levels as well like it's not just a like a queer story it's not just a story that tells a story it has so many levels to it that are so important and even like Jamie's parents their initial yeah we'll we'll you know we'll change pronouns and we're fine but then it gets to that decision and again they don't want to inconvenience themselves because it, it's a bigger thing and you know and I think as well it kind of comes into they don't want to get anything wrong so they don't want to have the argument because again they don't want to get anything wrong and it kind of falls into that and it just so many different parts that I think are really 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 real to the the queer experience regardless of like gender identity or sexuality I think that there's so many levels to that and there's so many levels to having to constantly come out because you never stop having to come out like you never have to stop like even the, you know the protests and then Jamie's interviewed afterwards by doing that Jamie has to come out to like everyone <laughs> like to like national to, you know and that's a huge thing you know you wouldn't have someone standing outside somewhere and being like yeah okay so um I am a cisgendered person like that wouldn't happen but Jamie has to do that and Jamie has to do that at such a young age and constantly has to advocate for themselves and I just think it's so this I just think it was so important the way that you told this story because it was there were, you know there's so much of it that was fun and made me laugh and that was also so important when it comes to friendship and having to leave your friends regardless like but there's this thing about like going to different schools and someone's going to be on their own and having to do that and it having to be this own, own thing you, you have that friendship element but then you also have all the other parts of it as well and I just think that you I don't know, it was a it was, you just you told a beautiful story like thank you, you. this is and lovely being shouted with compliments it's really really but nice. you did and it was just exactly what it feels like in so many different so many different ways and that's why I loved it so much like I just thought this is this is amazing and I think so many people need to read it and so many people would really benefit from everything that's in it and just hearing Jamie's voice yeah that that yeah that means a lot it's it's definitely a joyful book it I, is I mean, it is there are complicated points and nobody in it is perfect I mean no. I mean there are characters who you would paint quite broadly as being supportive but they yeah. they mess up because, because yeah. they're human 
they're not going to get everything right and that's okay it's they are not bad people because they didn't get something right the first time and I think you know you have to give people the opportunity to to apologize and make up and actually show importantly yeah. that they're going to do better can't tell you enough how how much I think this is going to have such a good impact um when it's out in the world and everyone can everyone can fingers crossed yeah, it's it's amazing so yes it's 21st of March isn't it are you when, like when you get 30th of March 30th of March, 30th of March. sorry when yeah. you get an arc I completely like lose track and then yeah. I yeah you, you do but yeah 30th of March everyone go and get Jamie pre-order Jamie um it's absolutely it's absolutely amazing do you have any last comment uh no just be happy be proud of who you are Thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, um, like I said, I make videos about books and pop culture a couple of times a week. So if you want to stick around and join us, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And all my other social medias are also in the description as well. I hope you're doing really, really well. And I will see you next time.